morning. Good morning. Today is August 23rd, 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. On behalf of St. Juliana Falconer Catholic Church in Fullerton, California, welcome and thank you for joining us in this warm morning. The readings, mass readings today can be found at our parish website at stjulianachurch.org. Please visit website, the website frequently for updates and faith formation resources. We also invite you to participate prayerfully this morning as Father Michael Pontarelli, along with Deacon Chuck Deutsch, celebrate the Mass. Summoned by the God who made us rich in our diversity, gathered in the name of Jesus, richer still in unity. Let us bring the gifts that differ and in splendid varied ways. Sing a new church into being, one in faith and love and praise. Draw together at one table all the human family. Shape a circle ever wider and a people ever free. Let us bring the gifts that differ and in splendid varied ways. Sing a new church into being, one in faith and love and praise. Gathered together at the Lord's table, we prepare to celebrate the meal with our prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God his Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We've gathered together to celebrate the mystery of God's love for us. Let us remember the ways that we've identified Jesus as Lord and Savior and give thanks for the times we've turned away from the Lord and our role in celebrating our place in the church, we ask pardon and redirection to ministry and to salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory. God the Father. Amen. 
us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that, amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? 
Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah. Still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Because of the new political campaign season and also today's readings, a story was brought to mind, perhaps apocryphal, but nevertheless too good not to tell, not to share. So it doesn't depend on what office, what candidate, what political party, or where in the nation this takes place. What happens is that the candidate goes to an assisted living facility, and this candidate is talking to um, one of the residents of the facility and realizes that he's not making a real good connection with the other person. So finally he pauses and says, do you know who I am? And the resident at the assisted living facility says, if you've forgotten who you are or where you live, you go to the nurse and she'll be sure to tell you and direct you back to your room. <laughs> oh good, you laugh, so you'll be doing that at three o'clock too. You see, the same thing kind of happens today how do we not know who Jesus is? How do we possibly question his identity? How do we poss possibly question his purpose? How do we say, I don't know the man? Well, we often miss, that's what, we often miss what is right in front of us, don't we? The presence of the living God. We often think that something else is going to bring us true happiness. We also think that something else is going to bring us true purpose in life. We think that we have to go somewhere else. Instead, just sit and enjoy 
the presence of Jesus, who's going to direct us for mission. That's exactly what he does with St. Peter. You see, there are two people in today's gospel who have their identities spoken to us. Peter identifies Jesus, you're the Lord. Now, Peter is obviously the one who's misinterpreted the Lord, misunderstood the Lord, will deny the Lord himself. But wouldn't you? All of a sudden, this itinerant preacher is curing people. This itinerant preacher is feeding a whole lot of folks with very little. This itinerant preacher is rattling the cages of the highest leaders of both church and state, and yet we're following him. This itinerant preacher is revealed as the Son of God. Listen to him with that voice from heaven. And he's missed, and he's identified, and he's the new guide for at least Peter. And Jesus identifies Peter, you, the one who misses everything, you, the one who walks on water yet doubts, you, the one who I often call to my side, you've identified me, and I'm identifying you, not the one who's continually messing things up, but the one who has a place for me in his heart, the one who has a place for me in his mind, the one who has a place for action that I'm going to direct, action that's going to change the lives of many. Knowing who we are and how we fit in is a very important lesson. So also, along with the beginning of a political season, it's the beginning of a new school season, however that's going to begin or has already begun. And isn't the most important lesson we can ever learn at whatever age is who we are and how we fit in? Jesus is saying, you're important for mission. You're going to be a teacher. You're going to be a server. You're going to be an administrator. There's a place for each one of you. All of you have a very important role but fit into that role, for it's the role that you've been given the grace to do. It's the role that you've been baptized to do. You weren't baptized to be spectators. You weren't baptized to just complain. You were baptized to be people of action. I want you to act. Act in a way to build up the church, as he told Peter. And he's telling that to each one of us, too. Maybe we need to pause every now and again and realize, who are we and how do we fit in? I'm a child of God, and I fit into the community called church, the community called family, the community called society as that child. And I'm sent to be a teacher, to be a prophet, to change people's lives. I'm sent to be a healer, to be one who can sanctify, who can bring somebody to holiness and do that. And I'm also sent to be a leader, a leader that's saying, come on, follow me to the new kingdom where you'll be happy. Peter's the one who, like a child, can identify Jesus and be happy with it. That identity, that new role that he's going to play as leader of the entire group. Each one of us has to figure out who we are and how we fit in. Maybe tonight, around the dining room table as you're slurping your spaghetti, you are going to eat spaghetti tonight because that's what Italians do. I don't care whether you're Italian or not, you eat spaghetti tonight. You got it? And while you're eating, maybe ask, how do I fit into this family? How do I fit into this society? Who am I and what's my proper role? And don't settle for shut up kid and eat, but rather find a question, that find the answer to that question that's going to identify you. Say, you know, hear from your mom or your dad or your spouse or the one that you're living with. I find that you're very amusing. You fit in as a clown. I find that you're very unifying. You fit in as a peacemaker. I find that you're a shoulder to talk to. You fit in as a person of compassion. That's how you fit in. I named you and I brought you into this world and I want you to be part of who we are and what we're all about as a family. I once asked that and I didn't quite exactly like all the answers I was given. So mom said, well, who are you and how do you fit in? Mom, you named me Michael, the name that means the one who is like God. And she never asked another question. Let us, as we slurp our spaghetti, do more than ask, is there any more? 
Let us, as we slurp our spaghetti, ask, who has the key to that cheese and where is it locked up? Let us, this day, realize that Jesus is the one who saves us. Jesus is the one who missions us for action. And the church is the way that we fit in. Certainly, we all fit in as a very important part of church, not as spectators, not as complainers, but rather as people set for mission, going forth as missionary disciples for Jesus. Let us change our ways and live for him alone. God bless. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, and through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Addressing our prayers to our loving Father, who knows us better than we know ourselves, let us ask these petitions for Holy Church, our nation, and our faith community. For the leaders of the church, may the Holy Spirit continue to work through them to bring others to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our national and local leaders, may God inspire them to find solutions to the needs facing their communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those struggling with chronic illness. May God bring them healing of mind and body. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may God's grace help us to affirm the dignity of every person, especially the unborn, the elderly, the refugee, and the poor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Hetty Rodriguez de Nunez, Rose Prebeg, and Frank Rodriguez, may they hear Jesus' voice as he welcomes them by name into the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parishioners of St. Juliana Falconieri Church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For scientists, health professionals, public officials, and all who serve the common good in this difficult and uncertain time, that they will be filled with wisdom and understanding, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As, Father, as Deacon Pete Lauder continues to rehab at his home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Today, April 23rd, is the feast in the Servite calendar of St. Philip Benizzi. For our Servite parish on the west, but certainly not the best side of Fullerton, because the east side is, for the ministry of word and sacrament uh, spread at St. Philip's parish for their successful ministry of identifying Jesus as Lord and following in his ministry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the Lord will send this most interesting weather somewhere else, maybe over the, the Atlantic Ocean that's warm anyway, and take these little black bu blood-sucking bugs with them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we ask that you hear all of our prayers and grant them according to your will and our need. We make them to you through Christ our risen Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
table is ready now. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God, the Almighty and loving Father. And Lord, accept the sacrifice of your hands. Praise the Lord in his name for our good and all of the church. O oh Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. 
until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer to you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, his brother bishops, and all who minister in your name. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your great mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saints Philip Benizzi, Juliana, Peregrine, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, and taught by Jesus himself, together we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the table of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those that can't physically be here with us, an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, if you are already there, unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. <laughs> Celebrate. 
just to trot you and me healed. Gather all your people and hold them to your heart. We remember how you loved us to your death, and still we celebrate for you are with us here. and mercy, the presence of the Lord. We remember how you loved us to your death, and still we celebrate, for you are with us here. And we believe that we will see you when you come. Father's great amen to all the hopes and dreams of every heart. Peace beyond all telling and freedom from all fear. We remember how you loved us to your death, and still we celebrate for you are with us here. We will see you when you come in your glory, Lord. We remember, we celebrate, we believe. See the face of Christ revealed in every and standing by your side. Give to one another and temples of your love. We remember how you loved us to your death. And still we celebrate for you are with us here. We will see you when you come in your glory, Lord. We remember, we celebrate, we believe. Hear a million wounded souls, I yearning just to touch you and me healed. Gather all your people and hold them to your heart. We, we remember how you loved us to your death. And still we celebrate for you are with us here. bread and wine to share a meal. 
The sign of grace and mercy, the presence of the Lord. We remember how you loved us to your death. And still we celebrate, for you are with us here. And we believe that we will see you when you come. Father's great amen to all the hopes and dreams of every heart. Peace beyond all telling and freedom from all fear. We remember how you loved us to your death, and still we celebrate for you. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulce Do, Et Spes Nostra Salve, A Te Clamamos, Exulis Filiae, A Te Suspiramos, Gementes et flentes, in hoc lacrimarum vale. Heia ergo, advocata nostra, eos tuos, misericorde saculos, ad nos convete, clemens. Oh, Virgo Maria. Good morning. My name's James Abowd. I'm the director of pastoral ministries, and along with Garrett Gamboa, coordinator of confirmation and youth ministry. We wish you a safe and healthy 2020-2021 faith formation year. In the words of St. Paul to the Romans, rejoice in hope, endure in affliction, persevere in prayer. We are enduring in affliction. And now we rejoice in hope as we prayerfully announce the opening of the 2020-2021 Faith Formation and Sacramental Preparation for all our parish families. Our brand new, entirely online family registration process is open and accepting applications now for the youth entering first through 12th grade. Go to stjulianachurch.org, then go to Faith Formation tab, and click on the red button that pops up to be taken directly to our family online registration process. Pope Francis said, the first place children learn the faith is in the home, following the good example of their parents. Following our Pope and remaining faithful to COVID protocols, we moved faith formation into your family's domestic church. 
supported by online and in-person assistance. We restructured our fees to one flat fee for the entire family, covering every child enrolled, every sacrament requested, and every faith formation session. All we ask is that you complete your family's registration by September 22nd, allowing us time to gather licenses and supplies for an October start. Now here's Garrick with some additional information for EDGE and confirmation. As James previously mentioned, we'll be offering EDGE 6th through 8th grade middle school ministry and confirmation preparation <clears throat> as part of the entire family registration. This year's sessions will be offered both in a hybrid and completely online format. For James and me, though we've been ministering to young people for many years, this year's ministry will be vastly different from years past. Our current realities have created new struggles that we have not encountered before. However, what doesn't change is our need for Jesus Christ and the importance of sharing the good news. So I ask you, as our parish, to please pray for our young church. They need our prayers and support now more than ever. If you feel called to help out further, please reach out to either of us. Volunteers are always needed, both as catechists and help in the office. James and I will be in the back after Mass. My other announcement is that we have finally have a date for confirmation, high school confirmation for those seeking confirmation from the last spring. Though this wasn't what we originally planned for, I'm happy to say that this year's candidates will be getting confirmed on the campus of our diocese at Christ Cathedral on Thursday, September 10th at 7 p.m. This will be an incredible opportunity for our young people and our families to experience the universal church. Please pray for us as leaders, pray for us and as leaders as we pre make preparations for this joyous occasion. I'm really pleased with the direction, James and Garrick, that you're giving our parish in faith formation. I do believe, and I've wanted for a long time, to have parents involved in faith formation, involved more than just simply bringing your children here, dropping them off and picking them up at a later time, but rather participating in their faith formation. I think it's going to make all the difference in the world. I'm really happy that we're doing this kind of program. And also that we can have confirmation at Christ Cathedral. I was preparing, to be very honest, for about three different ceremonies of confirmation, hopefully to get a bishop at one of them. But Garrick was insistent that the class be held together, that the candidates who went through the, um, the, the preparation process not be separated, that we have one ceremony. I didn't quite know where to do it when all of a sudden we came to the conclusion Let's try Christ Cathedral. It's a rather big place, and it's got all sorts of opportunities. They didn't quite know what to do with our request at first, and then they honored it, and I'm very happy. They haven't had their confirmation yet. St. Juliano's will be the first confirmation at Christ Cathedral under the COVID um, uh, era, <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm happy for that. I'm also happy to, to say, you know, it's kind of difficult. How often does the pastor talk about money um, and now? I've said repeatedly, um, I, I have good news. Our collections are just slightly down. We're not at all devastated. Some parishes are, and others are, in fact, ahead of where they were um, before COVID in their collection. We're just a little bit below and I'm very grateful for all of the opportunities that you've had to, to give, and you've done so so generously. Thank you very much. In the regular collection and on the various second collections. The second collections for building, the second collections for school, the second collections for St. Vincent de Paul, you've been attentive to that. Continue, please, to be attentive, especially to the uh, collections for school. We have some extra expenses as we begin uh, school this time with COVID. We'll have a modular unit brought in and we've had some uh, repairs and remodeling done in the school to accommodate various classes. So there's some extra expense and we need the second collections 
we need any help that we can get, and you're always willing to do it. Our PSA appeal, we've met the PSA uh, assessment from the diocese and surpassed it, so anything that you give now will come back directly to St. Juliana, and I'm most grateful for all of that. You're a very good and very generous community. It's very difficult to say anything other than thank you, thank you, thank you. We, um, you serve us all very well, and we're um, a, a proud and, and, and grateful community. Thank you. The second collection next Sunday will be the missionary collection. We've always had a missionary come during the summertime to speak about his or her mission in some place in the United States or the great big world. This year that didn't happen, but it'll be a simple, a simple one collection taken up in the churches of the diocese and then split among the various missionary groups. That collection will be taken up next Sunday. There are envelopes available here, or if you're giving at home, please add an extra envelope with the intention missionary collection so that it doesn't get confused with St. Juliana money or else we'll take it and it won't go where it was intended. Again, thank you very much. Our congregations keep growing um, on Sundays and also the weekdays. Obviously, you believe that it's safe and that we're following the necessary protocols. Um, please encourage others to come and more masses will be opened. At 6.30 in the morning, we're approaching 50 people. That's really nice. And we have morning mass at 6.30, Saturday at 8 o'clock, and Sundays at 9 and 7 o'clock in the morning. We do our best to observe the necessary protocols. It's best if you bring your own chairs. We don't have um, the huge supply of chairs, and we have to sanitize the chairs that we do supply. And if you're in the sun and would like shade and we don't have it, bring an umbrella. Again, if you're bringing chairs and umbrellas, please bring them that advertise things that I like, college teams that I like, professional teams that I like, so that we can all do the things that I like. Why? Because I'm Michael, and I'm the one who is like God. <laughs> Just not here. <laughs> My name could be something like Christopher, you know, the bearer of Christ, too, or Moses, the one drawn out of the water. We can go on and on, but let's not. Let's stand and pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you alone. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We are sent into the world to proclaim the reign of God. We give glory to the risen Christ among us. Though our eyes have not seen his face, we believe. And we spread the story of our faith. Sent out to the world as the followers of Christ, we are called to proclaim the news. For Christ conquered death in his rising to new life. Rejoice in the power of the truth. We are sent into the world to proclaim the reign of God. We give glory to the risen Christ among us. Though our eyes have not seen his face, we believe. And we spread the story.